And now Dr. Sita Sisla will be talking about plastics and agricultural soils. Take it away, Sita. This is ongoing work in my lab at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. So um, in order to really think about the application and utility of biodegradable mulches, I think we need to take a step back and think about why transition away from a um, polyethylene or a conventional plastic technology when it is very efficient in its use in, in agricultural systems and particularly in strawberry systems. And so I just want to highlight that plastic mulch use in agricultural systems, both strawberry and other um, commercial crops is exploding globally. So at this point, global plastic film mulch use on croplands exceeds 1.5 million tons annually. So this is an enormous sort of production and use of plastic, which is functionally not reusable and um, becomes a waste product after it's, it's used in the field on an, annual, on an annual time scale. And this is some images from our field work just showing plastic being taken off the field um, up in Monterey County, the removal of drip line, and then some plastic mulch um, set down for the next season of growing, just to highlight sort of the extraordinary level of plastic mulch that is used in, in um, strawberry and other systems, agricultural systems globally. And so what this connects to is the sort of growing recognition that um, plastics are a part of a global pollution burden. Um, we find them ubiquitously across all biomes globally. And, and we know that plastic culture is really an essential part of modern agriculture. Terrestrial plastic com contamination, however, is estimated to be between four and 23 times greater than in freshwater systems. And I highlight this because um, historically the focus on plastic pollution has been in aquatic and marine systems. And it's only recently that the recognition of the sort of extent and potential biological and agricultural consequences of plastic accumulation in soils is being recognized. Where is this plastic coming from? Um, we know that some of it accumulates because um, of film breakdown. So as films are removed from soils, even if um, it's a very clean process of removal, little fragments get caught, micro and macro plastics um, can build up in the soils um, no matter how clean the farmer is in terms of their removal of the plastic material. We also see plastic coming in from um, non-point sources such as sewage sludge or bio-waste and fertilizers from runoff from other systems and even from wind dispersal. We see a diverse um, sort of variety of plastics accumulating in terrestrial systems, including polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, um, polystyrene, and polyester. And for this talk, I'm gonna be really focusing on polyethylene. Some plastics um, are associated with toxic leachates like phthalates and pesticide accumulation. And so there's a sort of cumulative burden, both of just the general pollution of this material, which does not readily break down or decompose in a soil system nor in aquatic systems, and the potential for them to also be um, themselves aggregating pollutants along with the plastic themselves. And so we see that plastics are accumulating um, in agricultural fields. And our study sites are focused now on strawberry fields, although we have also in my lab looked at other agricultural systems as well. And so this is just some images from our field work where we went out and looked at um, sort of the post-plastic removal trajectory of soils before plastic is reapplied to the fields for the next cropping season. And what we see is that across the board, um, fragments of plastic get left behind. And so there is increasing work on both micro nano and ma macro plastic fragments. So plastic fragments that are greater than five millimeters in diameter um, on soil systems. And my work right now in the lab is primarily focused on larger plastic fragment accumulation, although we also um, are starting to delve into the accumulation of micro and nano plastics in the landscape as well. And so we recently went out and started sampling fields um, that are between a cropping of strawberry and, a, and an alternate crop. So when the plastic is removed from the field, the plastic mulch. And what we found is um, a pretty extraordinary buildup of, of polyethylene mulch fragments. Um, so we found between 140 and 4,000 hectares or 4,000 macro fragments per hectare in strawberry fields post um, plastic removal. And this is something that's part of ongoing work in our, in our lab, trying to understand sort of what is just the accumulation of plastic in fields that are using mulch and trying to identify lab um, fields that do not use mulch that are either in, in other cropping systems where plastic mulch are not used or don't use mulch for other reasons to see if this is just a general accumulation of plastic that's building up in the environment or this is particularly driven by um, plastic mulch usage over time. 
And there have been some other groups that have been um, working on this as well. And so this is a, a study, this is not from my work, this is from Zhang et al. And the paper was published in Global Change Biology about two years ago. And what they looked at was across different fields in China, they did a meta-analysis, so a synthesis, trying to understand what are the implications on soil properties and plant productivity um, for plastic mulch buildup in agricultural fields. And so what they have here on your x-axis, so I know this is a busy slide and we're in a webinar, so it might be hard for some of you to read, but basically on the x-axis of all of these little um, subgraphs are residual film build up in kilograms per hectare. So ranging from less than 200 to over a thousand kilograms per hectare of plastic um, that's built up over time in, in agricultural landscapes in China. And then they looked at that relationship between a number of different variables, including yield for different crops. So cotton, potato, um, corn, plant height, root weight, um, soil water evaporative capacity, infiltration rate, soil organic matter content, and um, plant available phosphorus. And what they found was that um, in general, there was a strong negative correlation across a variety of these traits between the level of plastic that they were observing sort of accumulating in the fields and the, um, the effect on these metrics. So for instance, plant height, root weight, um, soil water evaporative capacity, infiltration rate, organic matter content, and available phosphorus. So they saw these negative implications. Um, and this is one of few studies looking at the sort of ramifications at a large scale of plastic accumulation on productivity. And so we're trying to balance and understand right now what is the relative importance of, or what relative gains of using plastic versus its potential negative externalities of the buildup in soil systems. And then also working on projects to try to understand the utility and potential for biodegradable mulches to be an alternative, um, an alternative um, method for plastic culture in these strawberry systems. So my lab um, went out and has been studying the implications on soils in California for this plastic buildup. And as I said, we're, we're sort of a quarter way through the project right now. We're starting to sample fields to understand the buildup of macroplastics and then microplastics in, in soils that are and are not exposed to plastic mulch and their biological implications. And so some work that just came out of my lab recently was looking at, well, what is the effect of being in direct contact with these plastic fragments that are left behind in the field versus the bulk soil? So soil that's maybe contaminated with plastic from use, but is not directly touching plastic fragments in the field. And so we hypothesized that direct contact with plastic over time is going to have deleterious effects on soil properties that are related to um, nutrient cycling and productivity. So microbial biomass, nutrient availability, et cetera, relative to the bulk soil. And we sampled both polyvinyl chloride, so PVC, um, fragments that were left behind from drip tape, as well as um, the polyethylene mulch fragments. So what we found was not what we expected. So this is from a preliminary survey, and this has been recently published um, in, in from the lab. We found that macro fragments, so the soil that is um, directly associated here with the plastic relative to the neighboring bulk soil, seemed to be um, facilitating a novel habitat that was actually providing space for a larger and more efficient microbial biomass and larger um, labile carbon and nitrogen pools. So this was not what we hypothesized would happen. Um, we saw the opposite effects where the plastic associated soil was actually more active biologically than the, than the neighboring bulk soil. We don't know yet and are trying to understand um, whether the bulk soil that neighbors these macroplastic fragments may be relatively more enriched in microplastics, and maybe that's causing the differences that we're seeing in the soil type. And we're trying right now to um, understand through a variety of future studies, the relationship between what we see on a very small scale between um, soil effects of being um, intimately in contact with plastic fragments over time and the observed reduction in yields across farms when you look at the wide scale implications of building up a plastic um, macro fragment pollution in agricultural soils. And so um, this is the first step in a sort of longer and more um, broad scale project really trying to understand how plastics are accumulating in our agricultural soils with a focus on those crops like strawberries that use mulches, and then what are the implications of that? And then lastly, whether we can use these biodegradable alternatives to mitigate some of these 
maybe less um, well understood, but potentially very deleterious externalities that are happening in our soil systems. And so um, with that, um, I'd love to reach out to other farmers, growers who are interested in participating in our studies. Um, we're just trying to understand basically what's what's happening in terms of soil plastic buildup and the implications of it. And we share our data back with farms once we sample. And so please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, at sisla at calpoly.edu if you have any further questions. And I appreciate your um, attention. Great. Thank you, Dr. Sita. Um, we have a few questions in the chat. Brenda, could you please um, relay those to us? Absolutely. So one of our questions here is, are there any specific reasons behind decline in soil organic matter with increasing residual plastic films? You're muted, Sita. I'm still learning you zoom after two the, the idea the implications with that there may be a, a there's a relationship between reduction in productivity and reduction in inputs that build up organic matter um, in these fields and so you have a you basically have a, a feedback a negative feedback where if you're having very large sort of pollution burden plastic pollution in the soil and that's correlated with reduced yields you're also going to have reduced inputs of organic matter back into the soil and we don't see the same patterns here. One of the things that's tricky that we're trying to understand is sort of doing a large scale survey um, of agricultural systems in California and elsewhere in the US if people are willing to let sample because th there's, it's, since it's not a controlled experiment, right? Fields vary in their management and their history and their turnover of crops, et cetera, to try to say like this much plastic drives this much loss of organic matter is a really difficult thing to do. But what we can start to say is like, do we see these correlations happening in our fields, right? Do we see over large, large numbers of samples um, that there is a negative relationship between how much plastic we observe in the field at a given moment in time and its organic matter content? And that is yet to be seen as we've just sort of started this project. We're on our first six fields of collection right now. So Wonderful, thank you so much. We have a few additional questions here for you, Dr. Cisla. Do you think that the macroplastic provide for increased aeration in a warmer soil in addition to other poor management activities? So the plastic fragments, um, I don't know about the, like the aeration or redox potential. I do think that even we did not detect changes in moisture content associated with those macroplastic fragments in our study. But um, anecdotally, it does seem like they might provide micro, basically the ability for microfilms of water to persist in soils that are otherwise dry. So we're sampling in a Mediterranean climate where we're seeing um, sort of prolonged drought conditions. And so that study where I, I showed some of our, or I talked about some of the data from our initial study, these were fields where it was during the summer dry period and they weren't being irrigated at the time of sampling. So it may be that they're supporting a slightly more moist soil environment that facilitates increased microbial activity at that time of year. We don't, we weren't able to see that in our water content measurements. And I'm looking. And it looks like we have a few more minutes for a few more questions, if that's yeah. okay with you. Could, yeah, could large accumulation of macroplastic fragments correlate to poor management activities? So this is a great question. I, my my um, perception is that farmers don't want plastics to accumulate in their fields. It's not, it's not something that's desirable. And I think people are working hard to try to clean, um, clean out um, fields and be, be good stewards of their, of their um, resources, of their agricultural resources. One thing we're seeing, and again, this is anecdotal because we don't have enough fields yet sampled, is that soils that are heavier, more clay, tend to be accumulating more plastics, even if they're you know, managed by the same group. So like a field that's more sandy versus a field that's more clay. And again, this is just, you, you, you all know this, right? The clay, the clay um, soil is stickier, right? And so it's harder, like those fragments, they get, they get caught there when you're removing the plastic film, it gets it gets caught, it gets caught in there. And so um, we we see that there's some relationship probably between soil texture and, and plastic accumulation, most likely also management if, if management is poor. 
Thank you, Sita. That was great.